COVID cases in the U.S. are on the rise once again, thanks in large part to the Omicron subvariant. That subvariant first detected by New York State health officials last month, BA2, and experts say it appears to be spreading more quickly than the primary strain, strain of Omicron before it. The latest number is showing the seven day average in hospitalizations from COVID is up 18%, while the U.S. reported close to 100,000 new cases just yesterday. Amid this new uptick in cases, the Biden administration administration is warning the U.S. could see upwards of 100 million COVID infections this fall and winter. The president now pushing for more funding from Congress in hopes of heading off that potential wave. Joining me now to explain what you need to know about the new subvariant and other COVID developments is Dr. Anthony Harris, CEO and medical director at HFIT Health. Nice to see you as always. Sorry it's under these circumstances. So let's talk about this new subvariant. It's spreading rapidly here in the U.S., BA2, even as these mandates on masking, et cetera, across the country are being dissolved. What should we know about this latest variant? Sure. What we do know, and thanks again, Ruta Bay, for having me as always, what we do know about this variant is that it's 1.5 times, uh, times uh, more infectious than the original variant, Omicron. Right, and we knew how tremendous Omicron was spread uh, nationwide. And not only, uh, and this is a kicker, not only are we dealing with BA2, we're now dealing with um, BA.4 and BA.5, which was recently detected uh, last month as well on the 29th and 30th, respectively, of March. So now we're dealing with a number of subvariants of Omicron that are infecting the nation, and we are unfortunately on the rise again uh, with not just infections, but we are. Also on the rise again with hospitalizations. And so we have to be concerned. Look, there's evidence and history to show that uh, this is nothing new, unfortunately, right? If we look at the uh, seasonality of Omicron now pegged to uh, seasonality of the flu and pneumonia, uh, we're currently in week 17 uh, of our flu season. Our last peaks occurred at week 16 and 31 during 2020. In 2021, it was weeks 1 and 36. And now we experienced our first peak during this season season on week three. Again, we're on week 17, so there may be definitely more to come. Mm, okay. <laughs> well, the World Health Organization also, uh, this is new news, is reporting that the COVID death toll far exceeds what was once reported, what we actually thought. How far off was it, and are you surprised by this? I, unfortunately, I'm not surprised by this. You know, the projections were kind of across the board, right? We had projections of uh, 2 million dead here in the U.S. at the end of this pandemic, and certainly uh, we're not out of this pandemic yet. And so, uh, unfortunately, we're seeing the propensity for vaccination, not what we thought it would be before we started vaccinating. Uh, and we're seeing, unfortunately, the vaccine not be as persistent in um, resisting just infections as well as resisting severity and hospitalizations as we had hoped. Right? If we look at the most recent uh, publications here uh, in the New, New England Journal of Medicine, uh, about 20 weeks is what uh, is expected before we start to see a tailing off of the effectiveness of the vaccines. And so, unfortunately, as we may have heard this fall, there may be a recommendation for a fourth shot, um, meaning another booster uh, for the masses. And that's to help protect um, the masses from continuous infection and severity. And we're drawing data from Israel showing that uh, certainly uh, it still doesn't protect us as much as we get hoped. And that was my next question. Is it time for all of us to get another booster or do we wait until the fall or the next few months for the vaccines to be further developed to combat these new ongoing changing variants you're talking about? It's a, a tricky answer, right? So officially, no. Uh, it's not time for the masses to go out, and um, the CDC recommendation is not yet for the masses to get another booster. Now, it certainly is for those who are at risk, pre-existing conditions, those who have uh, who are 65 and older. Um, and we know that um, once you get that fourth booster, uh, even if it is, and so far the ones that have been Omicron specific actually don't work better uh, against uh, protection than the original vaccines that we've had, and that's data coming out of Israel again. So um, there is hope. The hope is um, that uh, the effectiveness of the vaccine against severity and hospitalization is still good. So I'm not advocating for not getting boosted, right? If the recommendation does come out this fall, yes, you should go get boosted. It's the same thing I'm going to tell my mama uh, and tell my family to go out and get boosted because we know it is effective at preventing death. And that's what's key because we are still leading the world in, in many ways in terms of mortality rate here uh, in, in the U.S.
And speaking of mamas, <laughs> uh, we are learning distressing information coming out about COVID out of Latin America and the maternal mm -hmm. mortality rate. What can you tell us about mm -hmm. that? And what is the message for pregnant women? Because we know so many pregnant and breastfeeding mm -hmm. women are reluctant to get the vaccine. You, you got it. Now, Ruby, you know I don't like to bring you bad news, but this is alarming news, right? We have data now just published yesterday, um, uh, and we, we know this data is now examining uh, deaths in Latin America, 447 deaths to be specific, and over 86% of these individuals that passed, mothers that lost their lives while trying to give birth within seven days or right after birth, 86% uh, of them were positive for COVID. And so the linkage is there for COVID uh, during a, a period of it's called antipartum, uh, partum, uh, and uh, and death of the mothers. And if we look at the numbers for preeclampsia, it's 1.7 percent preeclampsia potentially leading to uh, dramatic high blood pressure and liver failure during pregnancy. Uh, the risk of severe uh, severe illness from infection uh, is 3.3 uh, percent. The risk of um, uh, mothers that uh, unfortunately lose their lives as a result of COVID during pregnancy is 22 times greater than if uh, you're a mother without COVID symptomatically. Wow. All right. Uh, useful new information. Dr. Harris, thank you. You betcha. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.